more live guys it's been a couple days that i would go live i always say very quickly but let's just see how that goes okay so uh, i thought i'd talk about i really wanted to title the video carnivore keto intermittent fasting low carb high fat what would be the best for you i've kind of already used titles like that so i thought i would talk about uh how keto can harm you and what would be a better option to stay on keto to jump off keep going what's the deal so of course i've been learning a lot i'm gonna do a okay, i don't see any comments oh there is one person commenting okay you guys are listening <laughs> normally you guys are like hey why don't you guys give me a hello so i can see that the chat is working and it's on yeah okay what's up Okay, so let's go over, um, it's so weird because I was on the Dr. Oz show and then he was on another show saying, and he's done like four ketogenic shows now. And I was a ketogenic, I was brought on the show to be a ketogenic, hey guys, expert, what's up Deborah? My, my mod's in the house. And then I see that he's saying that a low carb, high fat or ketogenic protocol could give you blood clots. And I was like, how can you do so many shows about the benefits of keto? Granted, they were, it wasn't really keto, right? Um, how could you talk about doing, uh, uh, being a, whatever, the benefits of keto and then, and then, doing a show telling other people that the ketogenic diet will give you blood clots. Absolutely zero data to prove this whatsoever. Why? I told you guys, keto is gonna go up and then it's gonna go down and crash, but I will still be here for those who need and want the therapeutic benefits. And when people jump on, the intermittent fasting or the next diet craze, I'll still be here educate, educating you guys, all right? I'm not going nowhere. I'm in it for life. So it's very interesting how he said that it could give you blood clots. I have been doing keto for 11 years straight with no refeeds at all. So I don't think so, uh, Tamika. I don't think that they're gonna invite me back on the show because I think they're done now. Once you do a show saying it can harm you, you're now on to the next trend. So, you know what? I got other shows lined up, you guys will see. But um, I wanna be the voice of reason because we're seeing uh, people like uh, Jillian Michaels and other people now saying that the ketogenic diet can be dangerous and now, People are like, ketogenic diet fail, and I see all this stuff, and I'm like, y'all are sheeple. Y'all join the trend. You do it wrong. You, 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 you think I was crazy for saying be careful with all these things. Then you have extreme awful, uh, let's say, reactions to all of these foods and the way that you do your ketogenic protocol. Okay. So can the ketogenic diet uh, destroy your health? Yeah. Totally, of course. And it won't give you blood clots, that's for sure, unless you have a pr propensity for clots and embolisms and things of this nature. But I digress. Um, the problem is, is that people consistently and constantly do this the wrong way. So, I, where was it? On my Instagram, somebody posted, I've been following you for five years. And here are, are all the great benefits. This is where I should start inserting, you know, people, the screenshot of when people say these things. And so I took, I did take a screenshot and I put it on my Facebook. My Facebook is Stephanie, the business as in the business person. And to remind you, my uh, Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. But the point is that I took the screenshot, I put it up on my Facebook page, and then other people were saying, I've been following you. I've been following you as well for this long. So then I'm at, I asked the question back. 
are you having any, any adverse health issues? They're all like, no, absolutely not. In fact, this has gone well and this has gone well and this has gone well. So I've been coaching for a very long time now, thousands of people. You can go back to my video catalog and see it. And uh, yeah, definitely, Patricia, definitely. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so I'm just seeing the comments. So um, when people who don't get caught up in these dietary hypes, hypes, hype game, let's say for the intermittent fasting, fasting ridiculousness, a lot of people realize very quickly, as they did with the HCG, that when you try to do food deprivation of any kind and you have any blood sugar dysregulation, you're going to get kicked in the butt. And the problem with keto destroying people's health is they don't look at their current or past health status. So you have a lot of underlying problems that explode when you do these extreme. Now my keto protocol is not extreme. It's just practical and it's smart. Don't add in keto products. Don't add in processed foods and sugars and think that you're in ketosis at 50 carbs. So I'm going to give you guys some examples of that fails and why people fail. So number one, uh, people have their carbohydrates too high because they think that as long as they're under this 20 carbs and people really don't know the difference between net and total and we have sirens. What's this stuff live thing without sirens? Just saying. All right, let's keep going. So, uh, people have their carbs, they have the, the wrong type of carbohydrates. It does matter the type of carbs that you eat. For example, if you take an avocado, an avocado has 13, a Haas avocado. Oh, thank you, Rhonda. Uh, if you take a Haas avocado, it's got 13 grams of carbs for a whole Haas. But the reason why this 13 grams, which if you had that 13 grams of pure sugar in like coconut water, what's the difference? They're both 13 grams of sugar or carbohydrates, carbohydrates. Okay, so the avocado has a lot of fat and a lot of fiber. So the stomach's got to get to work. It's got to break down. You've got to have a gallbladder. You've got to break down, release bile salts. You have to have HCL, you have to have hydrochloric acid. You gotta start breaking down the fat and the fiber to get to the carbohydrate. That's going to slow, I mean, literally snail crawl uh, your digestive tract to break down those two major things. So major things to break down are fibers, fat, and proteins. So it's got two out of the three. And by the time that carbohydrate that's in that Haas, that 13 grams, hits your small intestine, it's dripping. And it, <laughs> good, good that nobody's in front of me, or else they get a big spit. Uh, yes, exactly, Matthew. Exactly. It can it can damage you if you don't do keto the right way. So this. 13 grams of carbs is entering the bloodstream so slowly that you don't have a glucose spike, right? So let's take, let's say two grams of carbohydrate from added sugar to bacon. Because it's pure sugar, yes, there's protein and yes, there's fat, but it's pure sugar. So that sugar can get in the, while, the, while the body is still, and it will slow it down with the protein and fat, but still while the, while the body is still trying to digest these more dense or more difficult things to digest, the protein and fat, you can access that sugar more quickly and spike your blood sugar, which is why you've got to read the packages to make sure that there's no sugar in your bacon. You don't look at the nutritional profile because that's a lie, right? They'll say, oh, zero carbs or zero sugars. And then you look in the ingredients and there's sugars. Yes, to like up this room, we got 50 people in the house and only 23 likes. So that reminds you, just collapse that little X in the corner 
and you'll see a thumbs up, click it, and then you'll see a chat icon and just reopen the chat. So I need to drink some water because I'm thirsty. It is so warm here, and I don't mean just internet thirsty. I've been on my bike all day long. So, uh, John, don't even bother. Uh, I got my mod in the house, so if you try and it'll be deleted before anybody sees it. So you're just wasting your time. All right. Uh, thank you, Gina. Yes, quick like. Okay, so I don't know what WT is, sorry. You must have gotten that some other thing. I know TUT, just time under attention. Okay, so that's a problem. So if your body is having blood sugar spikes, and that literally could be for 20 different reasons, that is one of them. That you guys can't distinguish what your what the carbohydrates do in your whole digestive tract and how it enters the bloodstream and how it's utilized. So what you guys don't understand is sauerkraut is okay for some and most it's not because a lot of you guys have a gut dysbiosis. But I'm gonna finish this point because the replay people are about have they're gonna have a heart attack if I don't finish my point. So uh, now the total and net carbs I have said for years to count the net carbs, which is the fiber minus, so you see a package and it says this much fiber minus the total carb number. But the problem is a lot of you guys are overcooking your cruciferous vegetables. And I only count uh, net carbs from cruciferous vegetables. So I don't count anything else. Like what's not cruciferous? Green beans. It's pretty low in carbohydrate though. Um, other types of foods I won't count because there's not enough fiber. Like cucumbers, crazy can spike your blood sugar. You think this thing's so low in carbohydrate, how can it spike your blood sugar? But it's crazy, you guys, it does, because there's not a lot of fiber. So if you eat a whole cucumber, tends to you tend to get a spike. So I encourage people to get a glucometer and start measuring their blood sugar. You don't have to do it your whole friggin' entirety on a ketogenic protocol, but in the beginning, it's really great to understand your blood sugar because if your blood sugar is swinging high, you're not gonna adapt, you're just not. Especially you guys who don't have good GLUT4 receptor development. So that means that you've got receptors that pop out of the muscle and can uptake glucose. So some people will have a hard workout and their body will produce a lot of glucose, of course, through gluconeogenesis and your body's taking I mean you know, it's, it's it's spiking your blood sugar. But someone like myself, I'm really good at clearing glucose. Really, really good and staying ketotic. Those receptors, those GLUT4 receptors can uptake that glucose and still keep me ketotic. But how many people work out six days a week like I do and ride their bike all over the place? Like I'm constantly active. Yes, it's hot in LA today. It's beautiful. I'm just, y'all know I lived in Sweden. I cannot live there again. I'm sorry. My Scandinavian people. Yes. My Aryan, lovely. I love my Swedish people, but no y'all and I don't like it too hot either so don't get it twisted my my dark people <laughs> okay so um let's see here so you have to look at all the different types of carbohydrates that you're eating and factor the fiber how much you've cooked them so often people say I'm just going to count the total number and just forget the net carbs because if you've got, uh, let's say, target if they if they want to, if there's, you know, three grams of carbohydrates uh, or five, let's say, and broccoli and there's three fiber, and then you're only eating like two grams of carbohydrate from broccoli, and people are like, no, I'm just going to count the total. So I've got one bowl, and then another part of the day I've got another bowl, another bowl, and then that's my carbohydrate carbohydrate allotment. Now you can do that if you want to. Uh, but I still count net as long as it's from cruciferous and as long as you don't make mush out of like baby food out of or cooking or over baking or steaming or boiling or whatever you guys are doing. So uh, really, really, really look at the packages of like anything processed and really look for the sugar content and the carbohydrate content because a lot of people don't do that. Oh, from Bermuda. What's up? What's up? Okay, 
Let's see. Maybe south of Chicago. I don't blame. I can do it. Maybe Chicago in the spring. I'm good. Uh, okay. So the other type. I'm trying to think what else about carbohydrates people have to realize. You know, you have to just be careful for the tomatoes. Be careful for the coconut cream with the water still left in it. Be careful for the coconut flour. A lot of people have a glucose spike from it. It's been hydrolyzed and dried out. So, you know, that can raise the carbohydrate count. Uh, even the coconut meat can be kind of like, some of you guys, and note this, have really unstable blood sugar. Like I was describing the GLUT4 receptor from athletes. Pe more athletes tend to have this. People who are athletic or have good muscle development uh, typically can clear out glucose as long as they don't have adrenal issues where the cortisol is constantly spiking. You know, people who are relatively healthy, because even if you have good GLUT4 receptor development, and but you are a stress monger and you're unhealthy, you could still have a glucose spike and you can't clear it all, you know. So you've got to really have a nice homeostatic balance in yourself, in your day, the perception of yourself. Um, just trying to think about any other type of carbohydrates that you guys think about. So people thinking that they're going to adapt on 50 carbs, it's not or net, and just keep it right there, just to not confuse yourself. So glucose spike is anything, anything that's a spike. So you would test your glucose. You would go either by the fasted number or you would do a pre-glucose check just to understand the rhythm of your glucose. Now, some people, a lot of people use the glucometer to see if they have a glucose spike. So they'll do it every 30 minutes up to two hours. So they'll test four times. And you would only do that like once a week or twice a month just to see, okay, I'm going to take this food out and test. And so, but really a significant spike that on the edge is 10, right? 10 milligrams per deciliter. Now millimolar, millimoles, that's a tough one. I would say one or two. Using kind of plant source foods that have more carbohydrate, you can't take one that has a lot. Also, olives don't have a lot of fiber. So you only can really kind of use, you've got to eat your fat with your cruciferous with things like olives, or you shouldn't really just plop olives in your mouth. Like here's a can of or a jar of olives. I need a snack. And another thing is you guys, you really shouldn't be hungry on keto. So I don't really add a lot of snacks like olives and coconut cream and berries. And, a lot, and another thing is you guys think that you can eat berries on keto? You can't, I'm sorry. Like the fruits of today have been Frankensteined out by man. They are not the very bitter berries that you would get in nature. These things have been, they're mutant berries. So they have more fructose. And when the body's like, fructose, yeah, blood sugar, spike, ketones. Um, still, it's the Stone Age and people are using urine strips. I don't understand. You guys can go back through my video catalog with me complaining about urine strips, but they don't work. You don't know how to, to, to analyze them and look at them. It turns purple, you think you're in ketosis. No, baby cakes, you don't wanna lose your ketones. It should be clear. So then if you're not adapted, it could be clear. And if you're not, if you are fully adapted, uh, highly adapted, it could be clear. So a lot of people get these things wrong. So just eating junk. I think I got the notification, all right. Now it's a cherry tomatoes are also problematic. And to be honest, a lot of you guys like what you don't understand is that the skin and the seeds of a tomato are super toxic. They're just mega, mega, mega toxic. And I mean, the thing that's the problem, like I'll go, believe it or not, I go to the library, right? I like going to the library here just to get out of my house. I don't wanna go to a coffee shop, I need quiet. I'll go to the library or I'll go to the supermarket. Um, you guys know I travel a lot, like going to the airport and you see, and I live in LA where people think they're all freaking beautiful and fabulous and full of plastic surgery. I mean, whatever. But the point is that these people don't look healthy. You like to nip to pull. You can't hide unhealthy. For example, so um, there are people that do stuff to get muscle, right? They'll either take it orally or they'll in their ass to get bigger muscle. And a lot of people online, a lot of these people are doing keto or they're doing intermittent fasting and the regular folk think that they're natural. 
And this one guy in particular, that's all. I have a keto course page. So if you guys want to sign up for that, it's a membership page. You sign up through my website, which is stephanieperson.com. And I also do consultations. Been doing them for years. So uh, right now I can't see the comments. So if you want me to respond to something, recycle it. Uh, Kathleen, just hold on one sec. But I just saw thanks for everything because it was in caps. Um, so I'll, maybe I'll start back and look at that. So the point is, is that I tried to tell him that... His body wasn't natural, so that lean and developed muscle is not attainable without taking stuff. He's like, really? I'm like, dude, do you have rose-colored glasses on top of your face, my brother? Like, what is going on? I'm like, look at his nipples, okay? Man's nipples should not typically be pointy, okay? If, if a man's look, nipples are looking like that, that's the aromatization of the nipple. Now, very rarely, in some rare cases, some men have that naturally. Um, other types of men have them because they pull them out because they like it. Yes. They have other people suck on them and they pull out. But really, just a normal guy who lives who's got uh, pointy nipples has an uh, aromatizing effect where they're taking testosterone and there's too much in the bloodstream. So the body tries to balance itself by raising the estrogen. And when the estrogen spikes, they start lactating and start having, um, a lot of them develop gynoclama gynoclamastia, which is the aromatization of a man's pectoral muscles, essentially making breasts. So a lot of these guys have, have a surgery and have the milk duct stuck. They have it taken away, so they stop lactating, and then they're left over with a pointy nipple. But the point of talking about this is you guys think that you can do all this garbage with keto and be super ripped and like people think I'm so lean. I'm not that lean. I am not that lean. I look lean, right? But you can see that everything in my body looks pretty soft, right? I've got body fat for a moment. It's probably about 13%. And if I pull on my body, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of fat. See, that is fat, but it's not a lot, right? not a lot of fat but the reason why if you if you look at the women on Instagram a lot of foolery is going on you guys uh, breathalyzer, breathalyzers are also a complete waste of time so what I want you guys to understand is to understand like to really look at a real ketogenic body that's been adapted over time so when you guys jump into this thing you don't hurt yourself in the process of doing it and then you've got people on tv shows saying it'll damage you give you heart disease give you blood clots and all this absolute nonsense so people have been following me enough i've thousands of people no one has ever come back to me with placking more placking of the arteries with a completely healthy life and and not refeeding on sugar and super healthy and exercising and diaphragmatic breathing and eating the wrong right foods and rotating the foods and no knowing what foods irritate the gut wall no one that i know who has made the healthiest choices of doing a ketogenic protocol has come back with more calcium in their arteries at all no more not more calcium deposits uh, not more thyroid and adrenal and reproductive issues. They have everything improved. Sleep improved. Hormones improved. Everything's going to improve if you do it the right way. But the right way takes a lot of work. And a lot of you guys are too impatient. And then you see people like the guy. I went a little bit off on a tangent. But if you see somebody who's ripped, right? If you see a woman who's ripped on keto. I am not that... I. Really, really low body fat is you can pull the skin out to here and it's lean as frack, right? So I'm leaner on the bicep. You can pull that skin out that far and there's just no fat in it. That's someone who's, and then you're, you're very, very, very vascular. And as you guys see, I'm not vascular at all. So I'm a 51 year old woman and this is a healthy body on keto. So be very, very careful to not be take down your body fat. You won't lose muscle because you're taking stuff and you're confusing people. So there's also this whole before and after, and I'm going to do a separate live stream about this before, after absolute lying bull crap. People will, I mean, you have the Kardashians editing pictures, right? You've got the average person editing their pictures. So, so and, what to do before and after and why it's so easy to lie 
And this is what I love about live streams because this is my real body. I'm not lying. Okay. So the other things that can harm you uh, is not having enough electrolytes. They just lie. And they lie because they don't understand. People don't tell you that they become constipated, that they've developed dry eyes, a dry mouth, the candida die off, the ex extreme exhaustion, the crepey skin, the dark circles under the eyes. Excuse me. No one's talking about the, what happens when they're intermittent fasting. No one. You cannot fast and not put gasoline into a car that's used to putting gasoline into. Now, if y'all gonna park the car and have it on empty, you're good. Fast away, not a problem. But if you're going to drive a car without gasoline in it, and the body doesn't know how to use ketones, it's gonna burn muscle. It's gonna burn through your amino acid, and that's that. Y'all don't wanna believe it, but go get a glucometer and watch your blood sugar. Like, well, my blood sugar is just like in the 70s. I'm like, yeah, you're hypoglycemic. You're not using ketones, go test your ketones. Oh, you're studying keto carnivore due to red Okay, so I'm gonna get to your guys' comments and questions, but people on the replay like to hear, you know, all the things why, you know, if you shouldn't do keto and you shouldn't do it if you've got really bad hypoglycemia and you're shaking, you've constantly gotta be eating. You're the perfect person who needs to do, do a low carb, high fat protocol and graduate yourself into keto slowly. So you can start at 100 carbs and go down to 80, sit at 80 for a couple of weeks. And I don't, I mean, you can't, and the, the I'm very careful with the types of carbohydrates, like be careful, be careful for uh, sweet potatoes because of the anti-nutrients in them. Uh, some people react to the white rice, but these are the safer out of the worst vegetation. White rice, sweet potato. Now you can do cooked carrots. You might be able to do some yellow squash and you might even be able to do some berries when you're doing low carb, high fat. I want your fats real high, but I want you to use teas and broth to get the bulk of your fat in. So you're not mixing carrots, you know, really cooked caramelized carrots with onions, for example, with a bunch of fat, with 45 grams of fat, because you might store some of that when your blood sugar spikes. So there's a science behind doing low carb, high fat, knowing where to place your carbs as you're learning how to live on a low carb diet before you graduate into keto and to make sure you get a little bit of glycogen storage all throughout the day, but not enough to where you're eating a lot of processed carbohydrates. And if you do have something like white rice, and I say white because the arsenic and the toxins have been bleached out, which is why hierarchy in Asia eat white rice because it doesn't have all the junk in it, then you'd only have very, very small amount, like a one fourth cup with fat, a little bit of fat and with protein. All right, um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Now, um, the people doing keto, the, the, the people that scare me the most doing keto uh, are, are the ones who are hypoglycemic. Those people end up in the, and who don't get enough electrolytes in. Those people end up in the hospital because they're so low blood sugar and they're shaking and then their electrolytes are low. These are the people that get really, really sick. These are the people that are making really, really bad mistakes. Now, there are some people who start drinking coffee who never did before. People start eating mono foods, like I'm eating a lot of butter, but you might have a sensitivity to butter. Or I'm eating a lot of cheese and you're fracked up on cheese, but are in total denial because you never really ate cheese before, but because everybody says, eat that, then you start eating it. Then you have like this serotonin dopamine reaction. You kind of become addicted to it, but you feel always terrible eating it. Okay, so yes, to remind you guys who like up this stream, don't forget to hit the X in the corner, collapse, hit the thumbs up, and then reopen the chat with the chat icon. So let's see here. Um, ask another time. Thanks again. You're so helpful. Okay, thank you. Okay, going back to some of the comments. We'll take several, several tablespoons of melted lard. No, 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 you guys. No, it, eating a lot of fat is not harmful. It's not going to give you more small LDLs, it's not going to plaque your arteries, it's not gonna put calcium deposits, it's not gonna give you blood clots, it's not gonna do any of these things as long as you don't have a sensitivity to that particular food. So start learning how to test foods, because believe it or not, because if your gut is so fracked up, if your gut is destroyed, if the gut wall is destroyed, if you have issues, if you have any inflammatory diseases of the digestive tract, and you're sticking in a food that your body doesn't agree with, yes, you can make things worse. Yes, you can. You can create more of an inflammatory response. 
And so I'm always trying to tell people, don't just buy food in packages. All the keto products are absolute garbage unless it's just pure pastured fat without any junk in it, or and it should be pastured, or grass-fed beef, or if you can get grass-fed butter, that would be optimal, right? That would be optimal. So let's see here, because the benefits of keto, if I really go into the benefits, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's not just like a weight loss. The whole thing about weight loss is, you know, dropping your insulin, regulating your blood sugar, because you're always gonna have blood sugar on keto. Um, you just want on the lower side, regulating your insulin, reading, regulating your glucose, your A1C, and then that helps you sleep, get your body into uh, homeostasis, sleep better, hormones regulate, body begins to heal and the inflammation goes down and things like cancer cells have a hard time to divide without a lot of glucose coming into the bloodstream, which is what processed foods are. A lot of people don't even realize what they're eating. Like we are freaking animals. We're supposed to be living outside and foraging and hunting for food with our bare hands. And we don't do that. We go to the supermarket and we eat whatever. And then we don't realize what we're eating. This is what I spoke about in the stories of my Instagram. So don't forget to go to my Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic. But a lot of people don't look at what they eat. They just go online or they go into Pinterest and they'll see all of this food. And then they try to make these recipes and they start shoving these foods down their mouth and their gut wall. Agree with it. it doesn't agree with it. And you start to get more sick. So you have to deconstruct before you reconstruct and things like the gaps protocol and all of these things are really good to kind of take away stuff and add things one back. And you know, you don't know if you have a sensitivity to eggs. A lot of people have a sensitivity to the whites and eggs. And to this day, I don't understand why people are like, why, why can't I eat cheese? Why, why can't I eat nuts? What's so wrong? And I was like, are you guys living under a rock? I knew this years ago before I even ever heard about keto, about soaking nuts and about weighing casein in dairy and people having problems with dairy. And why are these people who've got really severe acne when they cut out the dairy because they have a sensitivity to the proteins when they cut out the dairy, their skin heals in many ways. Maybe not 100% or even 100%, I don't know. Okay, hey Stephanie, what's up, girlfriend? <laughs> hey, Gina. Nice to see you on live stream, thank you. Uh, Steph, I'm at a visitation for a friend. I have to, oh, don't worry. Don't worry about the trolls. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the stream soon anyway. Deborah, thank you so much for coming in and being on the troll patrol for a little bit. Uh, is there any suggestion on choosing chicken? I mean, you can get free rich chicken, you can try to get pasture chicken, but chicken is no longer something I talk about a lot when it comes to your proteins, because really the best thing about a chicken is the heart and the liver and the rest is, and the wing, but the breast, no. There's nothing in it, it's just protein. It's not even the best source protein. It doesn't have a lot of the things that let, let's say red meat has, which people are so red, afraid of red meat. I don't eat red meat anymore, why? because I heard something that it gives you a heart attack. I must be a ghost then. I've been eating this for years. Um, Kathleen, I think she means you should eat a variety of meat. Yes, you should rotate everything. People who eat mono foods tend to have more problems because again, you guys are not hunting for your food. You're going to the supermarket, okay? I don't care how healthy the food is. We don't know where it came from. Unless you grew it yourself or you killed it yourself, who knows where that stuff is coming from? Unless you know you're going to your food co-op or you're to your local farm that most Americans and people worldwide don't have, worldwide don't have ability, ability to access those types of foods, then you've got to sit and think, what am I eating? And what is it doing to my body? I see so many people, um, I see so many people just, like they look bad. They look really, really unhealthy when you're 51 years old, you think about your mortality. You think about, you know, uh, I was like, I was doing handstands, you know, handstand pushups, no wall. And I was doing handstand pushups and my back went a little bit. And I was like, 51, I'm 51. And I'm super athletic, but every little, if I reach back too far, you get a little tweak of the shoulder. You know, that synovial fluid starts to go down and you, you know, the muscles aren't as stretchy as they should. So it's the same thing with your diet. You have to be careful. You can't just, you know, I always say, Hey, look, cause you guys I used to be a pro skater. So I, I'd say to people, come on, let's go pro. Let, I mean, 
let's go skateboard. People are like, oh my God, I'm so afraid. No, no, I could never do that. I'm like, but you can eat all that crap. I don't know. I like, I don't understand. No, help me understand. And people really, really feel that if they don't eat the foods, they're not enjoying life. I'm like, then you haven't lived life because every second of my life, I'm enjoying it. Even the crappy stuff. Because I feel like every crappy thing that happens, you can learn something from to make you not do it again. And then you feel like a release, like, oh, okay, I'm 51. You mean this is a problem and this is a problem? Oh, light bulb. Okay, now I know what to do. So it's, uh, let's see. let me see what the comments you guys are saying. Grass fed butter is good anytime. Yeah, as long as you don't have a problem with whey and casein. Now, most people don't. Most people can handle butter more than they can handle cream or cheese just because of the higher amounts of whey and casein. And you go butter, and then you go cream, and then you go like cheese and, and uh, milk and dairy products and all this kind of stuff. Um, is where people react to those proteins. Now, I remember in old videos, I used to say, whoever thought of going under a cow's milk and drinking it from its udder, but now I'm changing. You evolve with when you, once you learn more. Lukash, is that how you say your name? Thanks. Is that Lukash Prince? Um, a rash. Okay, I've also noticed inflammation in the joints has gone away, has gone away down. Exactly, Alex. And so that's what's kind of weird, you know, like now people are like, keto's bad for you, keto's not good for you. And then like, but why are people like, you can't heal so much and then it be bad for you. That's zero logic. Like you don't have to be a scientist to understand that people are like, yeah, my inflammation has gone down. My shoulder that always hurt has gone down. All that gas I had went down. All of the like feeling like I was eating shards of glass has gone away. Oh, the acid reflux has gone away. Oh, my sleep has gone better. Oh, my menstrual cycle came back. Or my inconsistency of my menstrual cycle. Or men are like, I got a woody again. Like when all these, these things happen and then you hear it's bad for you or you hear, oh, what you're doing to achieve all of these wonderful things is not fun. And you stop and go eat a pizza because people say refeed every once in a while it makes zero sense. No, no, all to tell, that's just sugar. The problem with that is that's just sugar. It's a lower, you have a lower glycemic on all the tolls, maltitol and xylitol and erythritol, but you still, it's still sugar. You know, that's the problem. Hey Stephanie, how high or uh, should our, our glucose go after a meal? So um, that's a very subjective question because everybody's glucose goes in different directions. So for somebody who's just starting keto, some, for somebody who's been ketotic for a while, like you really have to know that individual person, but I can break it down like this. If you're eating, if you're fully keto, right? And you test your fasted blood sugar, is that out of focus, stupid phone? Um, and you test your fasted sugar and it's let's say 83. And then you have lunch and your blood sugar is now 93 after two hours of testing. That's a problem. Blood sugar shouldn't be 93 if you are not eating starches uh, and, and sugars. So you really want to, after two hours for it to drop down to 83 or like from 77 to 83 and know that you're more in that direction of adapting. But some people uh, who are fully adapted and listen to me people and listen to me well, if you use a glucometer, your blood sugar is always at some point gonna spike up to the 90s. It's impossible for it not to. So. You know, you just don't want to have 90s every day. If you, have, if you're, you know, women who have a, their menstrual cycle when they're ovulating, blood sugar <laughs> skyrockets way up, and then women start freaking out, like, oh, Earth has been great, just spiked up to infinity, and I'm like, yeah, and, you know, it's, the cycle is hard on this body. Or if you almost get in a car accident and your cortisol is just boom, 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 with someone, not, or if you have a food sensitivity and you eat something and your body's not liking it, your shite's gonna spike up. If you train too hard or you train at night, a lot of you guys are hypoglycemic at night. You don't even know it. You fall asleep because you're exhausted because that's your adrenals. Like I'm so tired. You just fall asleep. But because you're not in a homeostatic balance, the blood sugar starts going like this after you sleep. Like you wake up, you wake up, you wake up. A lot of you guys, I think it's called DAH, I believe is the hormone that, um, DH, I think it's that. Uh, ADH, 
ADH or DA or A, I think it's ADH, my bad. I think it's ADH. And a lot of you guys uh, are not producing enough hormones. That's another weird reason why people wake up. It could be because of the cortisol, but you're not essentially producing enough melatonin, which will help this ADH, I think. Um, and you guys aren't eating, your electrolytes are whack on keto. So you guys are like, you have sodium and potassium imbalance, ADH, you have wake up, you got to pee really bad. So there's a lot of is that if we sit and take our time and learn, and I know I say a lot of the same things, but every time I come under or your liver reacting between one and three in the morning with people who've got gallbladder sludge and their body's trying to release bio salts and you're eating food a little bit late and then you have this reaction in the liver and I say the word reaction because I'm not exactly what happens with the release of the salt or what's happening with the liver. But a lot of you guys will wake up because of your organs responding to things in the middle of the night, most likely cortisol or low HCL or potassium sodium imbalance or too much estrogen within the bloodstream, which has a problem with the biliary system, with the liver and the kidney and the gallbladder. So all of these things matter when you're doing a keto protocol to understand like what foods can I eat? How important is it, is it to mine my sodium and potassium balance, right? These things can get you into trouble and really, really make you feel horrible. Let me see, broke eight weeks stall by cutting dairy, cutting nuts. Oh, that's really, that's awesome. Okay, so Mary says, is that, is that Gia? Gia, oh, she's responding to Gia, broke an eight week stall by cutting down, cutting dairy, cutting nuts and keto treats and alcohol. I mean, it's just normal. I mean, I was on the Dr. Oz show and, and uh, um, Mark Sisson said that you could drink liquor on, on keto. I, I was like behind the cameras, like when he was doing a segment, I about lost my shite. I was like, what? I like had a literal physical visceral response. And my face was like, that's some bull shite. And then I was like, okay, Steph, stop. And people can see you do that. Stop doing that. Um, so people get confused and they don't do well. They don't ever really adapt. People think it's a indication of preserving acids and hormones and adapting. That's not an indication of it at all. The scale means nothing, zero. What really is important to understand your lean mass and your water and then your fat ratio and then your current health. That's what matters. And if you guys don't check what's going on with your health, with your sleep, your digestion, your poop, does it float? Is it pale? Uh, do you burp? Is your pee bubbly? Do you have candida overgrowth? Any parasites? Uh, do you have skin issues? Do you have like men? Do you wake up with a piss rock? I don't know why you guys don't know what that is. I mean, the words explain it. Um, do you have low libido? Is your testosterone low? Are you aromatizing? Like, do you guys drink coffee? Do you have to, if you eat organic, do you not eat organic? Are you eating the keto tre tre treats and snacks and garbage? And do you guys eat a lot of cheese? Are you eating a lot of nuts? Are you eating cashews, which are poisonous and pistachios? Like, I don't understand y'all. Um, are you eating these foods? My neighbor. My neighbor, see the elevator's broken just because he helped me bring my bike back into my apartment. He thinks he could just blast his house music. No, I'm kidding. No, I love you. Actually, I love him. He's, he's a sweetheart. But anyway, here we go. Let's see. I have high fasting glucose, even though I've been keto eight months, to carbs less than 20. Not sure what to do. Mary, did you, just this one stream, I explain a million things. I said 50, I am 52 channel, 51. I'm like, I'm 52 yet. <laughs> I was born at 67. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not 52 yet, you guys. I'll let you know. Shoot. Although this would be great at 52, right? 51. Um, so Mary, this whole live stream, watch the replay. I've listed everything that's problematic. You don't have enough fat. You're eating the wrong kinds of fat. You don't check your gallbladder. It's even functioning probably if you have leaky gut and you've got any type of sludge or stones in your gallbladder you can't digest the fat to even make the freaking ketones to use them people like you know if you're having an inflammatory reaction because somebody said eat a lot of spinach and it's an oxalate and you have a deficiency of an oxalobacter enzyme no bacteria deficiency and you 
can't tell the oxalates, and now you've got kidney stones and you're eating too much protein. Like, we don't know what to put. People are like, I'm under 20 carbs. I should be adapting. No, you sleep bad, you're not going to adapt. If you've got hypoglycemia prime to doing keto, you're not going to adapt. You have to fix that hypoglycemia. If you don't have a straight plumb line, you don't have a straight posture. So many people have rotated uh, shoulders, right? And their, their pelvic girdle is tilted forward. And they're like this because you're at a all day and you have weak back muscles and your rhomboids are weak. Like, yo, there's a, if you're working out too late, are you taking your kids to soccer at six o'clock at night? Do you watch TV right before bed? Is that thing flashing? Do you look at an iPad and read a book in your bed? Do you diaphragmatic breathe? Like you guys are taking showers right before bed because if you have a blood sugar problem and it's like up and down, it's like boing, 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 boing it's gonna continue doing that because in nature we wouldn't do all this crap. It's not that hard to just deconstruct everything and just don't go, oh, I eat only 20 night carbs, why am I not adapting? And I'm not calling you out, Mary, I'm just, you know, I rant. Um, it's a lot of stuff, right? It's a lot of stuff, like it's the breathing, it's the moving, it's like people are tense, they don't breathe enough, right? People chew their food, Chewing your food spikes your blood sugar. That's another one. Like nobody thinks about that. You chomp, go get a glucometer and eat protein real fast and check your glucose an hour and two hours later. You will be dead shocked how high it is. Craziness, crazy. And you could have diabetic high numbers from just eating your protein too fast. Who talks about that? A lot of people talking about science of keto. I get bored. I get bored. I get bored from the doctors. I get bored from um, the experts who talk too much science and not put it in practicality and apply it to real people. And then Dr. Oz, who I met, who is like one of the nicest men I've ever met. Like I got nothing but good to say about him. Like I don't care about the show uh, politics but he was saying that keto could potentially give you blood clots based on nothing, like literally nothing. So we have to be careful with rat studies. And when they do these studies, they're not going, okay, we're doing healthy females, healthy males between these age ages who've got hormones in balance, the biliary system works, they don't have adrenal insufficiencies, like they don't have any genetic mutations, they don't have MTHFR, they got enough caloric acid, like, everything's aligned right you take that person and then you go we're going to do a study and we're going to try lard we're going to try tallow we're going to try mct oil coconut oil butter we're going to do corn fed we're going to do grass fed we're going to do soybean oil we're going to do uh <laughs> um soy fed animals and grass fed animals we're going to, you know, and every, we, everybody knows what food sensitivities they have. Like, I don't do well with this food. I don't do that well with that food. If you literally tested 10 people and we're going to study them over a year's time, because that's like two years would, would be great, but two years would be too long. And we did a, a year study, right? Even a year is not a lot, but a year study on these people, that would be an objective study. If you're doing studies on rats, you're using like processed foods and rats aren't humans and these are the things that people don't factor and so they'll look at these science journals and was it um i was looking at uh high intensity health and i think he got to go to his channel because a lot of people that he interviews will not necessarily talk about keto but they'll talk about other stuff like when his one of my favorite interviews he did with this woman was about uh uh parasites and candida and I thought that was very, very educational to learn outside of keto. He does a lot of keto stuff and intermittent fasting stuff, but he also will interview people that talk about other things, you know, just like how the body works in general. Um, precision are the best. And then people buy Mojo because it's just simply cheaper, especially the ketones. So that's it's up to you what you want to do. Um, but Peter Atiyah's such an, I mean, he's an amazing man. I think he's the only person I follow on my Facebook fan page. But he said that they weren't sure how to measure autophagy with the intermittent fasting nonsense. So you can, 
people will keep going, talk about autophagy, talk about autophagy, uh, talk about autophagy. And I'm like, there's nothing to talk about, right? We don't know if people are experiencing a cleaning up of the cells. We don't know that. They can't measure it. It's a theory that it potentially could happen if you don't eat. But the problem is you take a modern human who's got a blood sugar dysregulation and you put them in a lot in the modern time of like sirens and stress and job and bills and then they don't eat and the body, body they've lived a life of carbohydrates and the body's like where's my glucose that's what i'm used to that's what that's because soils electrolytes and you're not eating and you're dehydrated and you feel like shite your blood sugar becomes super unstable become hyper um uh hypoglycemic or you begin to binge eat at night because you're so hungry so that's what happens when you live in the modern time and intermittent fast and then go i'm going to drop my insulin well guess what you can have a rebound of high blood sugar from not eating it just takes time and then it starts to appear so okay guys i've almost spoken an hour it's about time to go can't stand us well whitney he's a really nice man though i'm not gonna lie so I can't, and I was on the show, and I knew being on the show would be a good platform for pe for me to reach people, and it and it did its job. Do you know what I mean? I told the producers I will not say something I don't believe in. That was the thing that stressed me out the most. I'm not going to say that keto is an olive oil diet, and they're like, "Well, you don't have to do that," and I'm like, "I won't." You know, those words will never come out of my mouth, and they didn't. <laughs> I did say that keto was like animal fat. And I said like butter, bacon or something, and they edited it out. But I mean, the main producer like agreed, like it's all.